panning for gold. Two groups of young rugby players have spent an afternoon seeking a glimmer of hope in Arrowtown. Wendy Clark is an educator for the Lakes District Museum and was showing the boys how the panning's done. She says there's a particular technique to doing it right. When you create a tornado in the water, so you get water mixing with the silt and the pebbles, the gold theoretically goes to the bottom. So if you keep washing away the silt and washing away the pebbles, eventually, if you're a patient miner, you might get some gold in the bottom. The gold panning is part of a wider education program about demonstrating the lifestyle of colonial New Zealanders. Clark says it's becoming more common for international visitors to take part. This group is made up of members from two Australian rugby clubs and they've been taking to the task well. Twelve-year-old boys, they're really sweet, really nice age. They're not too cool for school and um, yeah, they're pretty good at listening and instruction. So most of them found gold. School groups and other visitors to the museum get to experience life in a Victorian classroom, touching and handling tools from the era. Staff are also offering tours around the surrounding historic township. Clark says Arrowtown's well preserved and the whole place is like a living artefact. It's an experience visitors can't get elsewhere. And there are pla other places you can go gold panning, but here we've got the whole package. We've got, um, we've got immigration from the Chinese, we've got the story of the Chinese, the story of the early settlers coming here in the 1860s and building a town in the middle of nowhere. It's a very interesting story and there are so many reminders here of, of that story. She says it's necessary for the program to be unique and diverse in order for the museum to survive. The good news is that the government recently furnished a three-year contract for staff to carry on. Jack Conroy, The South Today.